What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. We're here for a double feature back-to-back -back videos. This is very rare on Med Bros, but it's a treat this week. Oh, God. I have uh, Core Beauty here as well. Hey guys! Making a second appearance. And in today's video, we're going to talk about everything wrong with the college admission process. And it's a juicy one. We did a me everything wrong with the medical school admissions process before on Benit's channel. I think it's so, kind of like five things wrong with the med school. Yeah, admissions. five things, not everything. Yeah, I don't um, know if we could cover everything. So what is the first thing that comes to your mind when you think of something wrong with college admission process? Money. Money. That's, that's the answer to everything. Money is always an issue. Not commonly, but that happens more often than people would think. Mm -hmm. So people buying buildings or even, you know, having connections and um, donating money, all of that contributes to giving seats to people, right, mm -hmm. that might not deserve it. So yeah, mm -hmm. wealth is obviously an issue in that regard, but are you thinking of any other things? Yeah, I was thinking actually like application fees. There's those fees, there's fees associated with your SAT, the AP test, mm -hmm. there's fees for everything. Mm -hmm. And it just gets worse also as you go along. Exactly. Just FYI. If you want to see our med school video, you can check it out. I think it's Yeah, the med school hard. cost is extraordinarily Exponentially more. Exponentially yeah. more. Like, it it's just ridiculous. gets worse. But even in undergrad, it's pretty steep for like how common a degree is. Like, everyone's chilling out this amount of money. Exactly, because not like everyone in a family goes to medical yeah. school. Like, that's a more rare occurrence. But if you have five kids and four of them are going to college, mm -hmm. you're dishing out a, a good amount, amount of dough. And when you're trying to create a system where the poor and the rich both have an equal shot of succeeding, that's very counterintuitive to your plan. Yeah, yeah. and to take it a step further, like the wealthy can afford things that will obviously give them an upper advantage in like applying like prep tutors and like um, certain extracurriculars that will make them look better, traveling to other countries to do like work that will make mm -hmm. their application look better. Uh, private schools, just generally a lot of things that would prep you better for college. And in general, wealthier parents usually have more connections, they yeah. can hook you up with internships and whatnot, so yeah. it just goes on and on. Mm -hmm. We're focusing on so many other factors, but money is probably to me, uh, from what I've seen, yeah, the, the biggest, biggest factor. I think money is like, the biggest I think factor. out of all of the factors, people discount money way mm -hmm. too much. So I also think another stratification, I guess, is like... Um, networking and just like social benefits that certain people have it's not necessarily their fault that they might like know someone but like there's definitely a huge advantage for somebody who knows somebody who got into a certain school and like knows their application you know what i mean like mm -hmm. people don't normally like once they get accepted to harvard like post their online like application online say this is what i did to get into harvard like but if you know someone personally then obviously you they like you can have that conversation and they might even show you their application and you'll like get a huge insight that normal normally people wouldn't have and i think that i've been in certain areas we grew up we like we moved around a lot in california and yeah. there were very obviously certain areas of the state where people were totally in on this stuff and like the information was just like overloaded with like people sharing <laughs> stories about how to get in you know what i mean yeah. versus you go to another high school in like an hour away and people like don't even know that they have to take the SAT subjects test. There's just a ton of tips and tricks and stat bo and like college application boosters that you can do mm -hmm. that will increase your chances and that won't take much time at all to do. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't know about them and a lot of people are abusing them to hell and putting 20 things on, 20 things on their extracurriculars. Mm -hmm. Like how can you do 20 extracurriculars meaningfully, right? Mm -hmm. um, but it's just being able to find those through other people, through connection, finding out how to, how to yeah. pad that application. And also knowing how to present the narrative. Like if you have an insight into how schools want your narrative to be presented even if somebody might have a more compelling like i don't know personal statement as far as like what they've been through in life or like something like that and they want to convey a message if somebody has a different message that may not be not that it's not like substantial everyone's story is important but like say something like uh, somebody has a story that doesn't fit as well with the school but they know how to mold it to the school exactly that's like, a huge advantage for example with harvard harvard loves leadership and i think a lot of people who 
are applying to Harvard and that are well aware of this, they mold their application during the interview, they mold the interview to seem like a leader. Mm -hmm. But let's say you're not a leader or you know that's just not your thing, which is, I don't know why being a leader is a requirement, like some people aren't leaders and that's totally fine, right? Like you don't, you don't have to be a leader in order to, to contribute be, to exactly, society. Exactly, if everybody was a leader, there'd be problems, right? That's true, that's good. Um, so I don't know what's this, what's up with this obsession with leadership. You can be, even the support people are some of the, are even more important than the leader in so many situations, mm -hmm. right? Like there's the guy putting in the grind and the work. Yeah. While this figurehead, yeah, the yeah. figurehead is taking the credit for being the leader. Mm -hmm. And these people are putting in the work behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. So I think that's overrated in the first place. But okay, let's say Harvard loves leadership, which they do. And a qualified, two qualified applicants go to a Harvard interview. One is well aware of that. They've molded their, they've prepared all of their answers and molded all of their answers to fit that narrative. And one person comes in not knowing that because, you know, they come from a yeah. crappy school. They stood out in that school, but I mean, they didn't have, they didn't know how to yeah, they didn't have the advisors, the counselors, the other peers who went to Ivy Leagues and they go there and they just get flabbergasted mm -hmm. that, whoa, I didn't know this is what they wanted. The next thing that I want to talk about is um, having diversity in the admissions panel. So this is how I have always perceived it. Um, so as especially in California, because the state is just so diverse, but everywhere, this applies to everywhere, but you have so many applicants coming in and they're from all different types of backgrounds and as on your admissions panel, your job is to be unbiased. Your job is to pick a candidate that you resonate with, that's the whole point. Somebody who really like, I don't know, like may you make a connection with and you find is gonna be great at your school, etc. And you're supposed to be unbiased during that. However, I think that it would be a lie to say that sometimes we can relate more to our own race than others, just based off of a, uh, a shared culture. Like yeah. obviously you're gonna connect with someone with a shared culture. You have this huge commonality with your culture, with your background, with your dialect, that it would be weird if you didn't connect with them a little bit, you know? Yeah, so. but I do think that's an issue when it comes to admissions. admissions. That should not be a criteria. That's extremely biased that you're selecting more people that are more similar to you. Yeah. I think there needs to be more diversity in the admissions panel itself because honestly, if you have a look at some of these admissions panel, they're not all completely like uniform, right? There is some diversity obviously, but way less than there should be for an admissions panel because of all the inherent bias that comes with race and comes with you know, picking people that are more similar to you. There should be a wide variety of different people from all sorts of backgrounds and not just a select few with mostly um, uniform. This is about to blow your mind. So this is what an all admissions right, we're on page panel is. 61. Looks like. She's got fives in four APs. We divide our applicant pool of circa 8,000 candidates into 30 plus geographic regions and we pair two readers to each region. With Caitlin on her being an inside the box kind of gal. Inside the box. Inside the box. How many would like to admit waitlist? Prior to the conversations we have here as a committee, the group has been significantly reduced to a really, really accomplished group. He's a top tester. He's got all A's. Four varsity sports. The first chair trumpet in the orchestra. Is he ready for this? 6.4 GPA and a four scale. Did he get all those fives without AP courses? Yep. Oof. But we can't take them all, and so about a thousand candidates are brought to be heard by the whole committee. And the process of, of making those decisions is agonizing. I'm questioning the edge here, yeah. however, in all her excellence. How many would like to admit? Okay, she goes to the wait list. We're fully aware of the fact that the process is, I don't want to say flawed, but is making minute distinctions among extraordinarily talented kids. There are times, honestly, where I'm not sure why I put my hand up or, or failed to put my hand up. I'm kind of going with my gut here. The night before her AP chemistry exam, she learned her father had an affair with a 23-year-old prostitute. How many would like to admit? Seriously? One parent is a business exec VP with a master's. Both went to Harvard. He's got three sibs at Harvard um, in classes 09, 11, and 15. <laughs> His family financial situation took a huge hit 
and they lost their family store and all other assets. When a student is particularly poor and are achieving an exceptionally high level, that will be a plus factor for that student. Dad's alcoholism consuming the family. This is a quote from one of his essays. The alcohol consuming poor Muslim family down the street with whom no sane member of society would want to interact. How many would like to admit? I am cognizant of some lives being changed, literally. On the other hand, yeah, I do feel badly. The months of February and March are, are simply no fun. Okay, if you don't think that was a complete joke of a, of a panel, then something's wrong with you. Holy crap, who designed that? And that is, that is horrendous. That was horrible. That was literally the word, like who designed that and who's okay with that? Does anyone see the issues with that? Holy crap. So first of all, first off, the most obvious thing is that groupthink, right? You're having a yeah, bunch of people think. raising their hands together. They're obviously gonna come together for true, the sob stories. True. The second they hear two sibling, siblings from Harvard, they all have that Rolling grudging. their eyes. It's so stereotypical, like, wow, that that's very disturbing that that happens. Yeah. Like, you're- And also just looking around the room, I'm sorry, but there was no diversity there. Yeah. I'm really sorry. Maybe there was like two different people represented. Like, exactly. It was horrendous. And there's lots of opportunity. There's lots of people in the panel. You could have picked someone more diverse. There's lots of well accomplished, diverse people in the world by now. You can pick somebody like diverse for those panels. Yeah. And even so, just look at the small little quotations being taken apart, uh -huh. and they're using those uh -huh. as key indicators of yeah. how to admit. You should be looking at a more holistic view of the application, yeah. not looking at some. A uh, quote from an essay showing trying to portray and put these people in a and box. Okay, they're also, looking for out of the box candidates, yet they're putting every candidate in a box. Question though, uh, what stops people at this point from just lying? Nothing. I. Nothing. How do I know your dad's even an alcoholic? I mean, that's a horrible thing to say, but also like I feel like I definitely know people in real life who lie the crap out of their statements. Yeah, but with the way this is done. It's heavily encouraged to lie the hell out of your statement because yeah, because that's all that's you're you, looking for what like let's be real it's like a TV show if you're sitting there reading a thousand applicants you're gonna want something interesting to spice up your day right so when you hear that somebody's dad in an affair with a 23 year old prostitute you're like oh that's so cool admit that's not how it's supposed to be it's not a game it's not a show exactly because when you're in a group like that you're not thinking okay. Who should I admit as the most talented, hardworking? Who should I raise my hand for? No, you're raising your hand because hmm, when I when I look around and I'm the only one raising my hand because this kid's a nerd, I'm gonna look weird. But if I'm raising my hand and everyone's raising their hand for this so sob story or this this candidate who's um, you know written something up or had this nice little quote taken from somewhere and I raise my hand, that's gonna make me feel better because everybody else is raising, raising their hand and we feel like we're doing something good mm -hmm. versus we're doing what is best for the process. I now think about it, on that panel, when I'm holding a piece of paper, I'm on the panel and I read, this kid has a 4.0, one of the, or whatever, straight A's, complete A pluses. What an incredible accomplishment. Right? I know, but Amazing. just like mad. but. Who's gonna raise their hand for that? Who is gonna yeah, stand nobody. up and say, this is amazing? Yeah. But when it comes to um, a box quote or a quote from one of these, yeah, everybody's gonna raise their hand. So you're basically minimizing certain types of accomplishments and things over others. When it should right? be a holistic process. And obviously, stories are an incredible reflection of a person's life journey and it contributes to who they are and that should be considered. We're not saying that just because exactly. people have stories doesn't mean they're great uh, candidates. Of course, that's true as well and that should be considered because there's a lot of people running around with 4.0s yeah, now. But it's the way that that is translated into this. So you have your essays, your grades, your SATs, everything which you submit to the colleges. Okay, that's great. It's a well-balanced pool of things you're sending in, right? But the way they're selectively picking certain things over others in this process here is extremely problematic. Let me make this clear. I think that your story, your journey, that is incredibly important. But that should be in the context of everything, right? That story should help put you in context. They shouldn't be taking box quotes out of that and trying to characterize you in a certain yeah. 
in a very reductive way for everyone else to hear. Yeah, and everybody I think, else honestly, should be reading that entire essay. Everybody else should be thoroughly going through who the person is and making a decision. Yeah, and I also think one of the main problems that I had was definitely group think. You should at least be putting these people into separate rooms. Yeah, groups. that should be completely. Or like on a phone, you should be voting. Or honestly, I don't even think they should be considering these applications together, in my opinion. Maybe towards the final round, if that's absolutely necessary. I don't think that these people should be sitting together on a panel. I think that they should be individually reading all of these things, putting in submissions, and then that's how they should be determined. Yeah, why well, should you have it done beforehand and then come together to and discuss. discuss? That's a good because idea. raising your hand in the moment, but still, people will change their answers. They'll be like, Yeah, I agree with defend. you. I see your point now. You have to defend yourself. What was that? Waitlist? Okay, let's move on to Judy. Yes. Like there needs to be more discussion. There need basically what we're saying is there needs to be more nuance to that discussion. That was way too reductive for what they're doing. Yeah, that is one of the most heinous things I think I've ever watched. One guy literally but said, I, think, I don't even know why I didn't raise my hand. I don't know why I raised my hand. Like, yeah, and they're even unsure. That's somebody's what life. <laughs> Again, I think that the everything that's being done has merit, but the way it's implemented. And I think that that's ultimately mainly what it comes down to is that this whole thing is a game and figuring out what the right things to say, what the right things to do are, are part of the game. And that's the biggest problem with admissions in general and hopefully that's why me and Sean started doing school videos on our channel is to bring some sort of transparency and give you guys some information who maybe don't have those networking like friends that are like you know excelling or in or in the know or whatever like at least hopefully we can give you the knowledge that we know well that's going to be it for this video it was longer than i expected there's probably tons of other points we could have touched on but let us know what they are down below because we ain't got time for it in this video our double feature is over go check out her channel she's got a lot of uh oh we got a triple feature technically because you're on my channel again. oh yeah we got a triple feature so if you uh, wanted coffee, come here. If you wanted, actually, yeah, if you wanted coffee, come to my channel. If you want to get the tea, go to uh, hers. <laughs> yeah, I do have the tea on my channel. But um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and we'll see you guys in our next one, hopefully. Later. Bye. What's up everybody? Welcome back to Med Bros. Hi. And back to back <laughs> videos. It's a special feature. So in today's video we're gonna Wait, talk about I sounded like a two-year-old. <laughs> you okay. gotta redo that. Right. I sounded like a sound effect on like I don't know, little eye stuff.